Allah, Yahweh Hashem, and Mashiach Yahweh That's all praises to the Most High God in the name of His only begotten Son. We are the Israelites that the Bible speak of. We're out here to prophesy against these wicked nations and all the associated countries to America. But more importantly, we come out here to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which are in fact you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. God's chosen people, the people of the book from Genesis to Revelation, predicated on archaeology, history, but most importantly, biblical prophecy. That is the instructions that the Lord told us to do. He said, come out to the highways and byways and bid them back to the marriage. So we're out here to sound the alarm, to blow the trumpet, because this is the last days and the Redeemer is coming soon. And we have to be ready and prepared for the coming of Hamashiach Yahawashai. So, uh, Iris, right? That's your name? She she had a question about Easter. Uh, that's the pagan day that is uh, the world will be observing tomorrow. Tomorrow being the 31st of March this, this year, right? Yeah. So they're going to be observing that custom in that fashion. Now, the word Easter is mentioned in the book of Acts chapter 12, verse 4, but it's a it's a English word that shouldn't be in there. Somebody grab me the Compact Bible Dictionary one more time because that word means something else. But the way people are serving and worshiping uh, uh, that that custom goes back to idolatry, to, to wickedness and idolatry. So go up right there. You just passed it. That's highlighted in green, actually. Yep, right there. Read that real quick, Doc. This is the Zondervan's Compact Bible Dictionary. Easter, Passover. Rendered Easter in Acts 12, verse 4 in the King James Version, but correctly translated Passover. What now? Passover. See that? So the, the, the way Acts chapter 12, verse 4 should be spoken of, it should say Passover. But in the English translation, it was written as Easter. But that word Easter actually goes back to a pagan deity that was worshipped by the ancient Hamites years ago and has been passed down through the different nations and translated into other names or deities so let's elaborate real quick let's go let's start with the book of colossians chapter 2 verse 8 just giving you a little history and understanding on why people celebrate easter and how the lord actually feels about it because this is a common thing uh celebration that many of god's people are celebrating they have to get out of it asap uh -huh. go ahead king colossians 2 and 8 and then give me the book of uh Jeremiah 2 and 11. It's the book of Colossians chapter 2 and verse 8. Bring it out. Beware, lest any man spoil you right. through philosophy and vain deceit. Uh -huh. After the tradition of men. After the tradition of what? After, after the, the tradition, tradition of, of men. men. Right. After the rudiments of the world. Right. And not after Hamashiach. Christ. You see that? So the Lord says we got to be careful of this thing. When the Lord says beware of something, he's telling us to be on high alert. Be very cautious. Be attentive. Be circumspect. Don't let the wool be uh, pulled over your eyes. Make sure you're being, uh, paying attention to what's going on in the world. He says beware lest any man spoil you, meaning ruin you or make you rotten through philosophies and vain deceit, religions, propaganda, False teachings. God says, beware of that thing. Uh, give me Jeremiah 2 and verse 11, Bob Kishah. This is the book of Jeremiah chapter 2 and verse 11. Let me Judges 2 from the top. Hath a nation changed their gods? What the Lord say? Hath, Hath a, a nation, nation changed, changed their, their gods? So the Lord is asking the question here. He says, Hath a nation changed their God? Meaning these other nations have their own religions. They don't change what they worship. They're serving whatever god or whatever religion they uh go back to so the lord is asking the question have you seen these other nations change their gods right which are yet no gods which are what no gods they're no gods oh. buddha is no god okay right. krishna is no god islam is no god all these different religions that are all over this world god says these are no gods we have to serve and worship the true and living God, right. the God of heaven and earth and his only begotten son. Go ahead. But my people have changed their glory for that which doeth not profit. But see, that's the thing. But God is saying, he says, these other nations, they still serve their gods, which are no gods. But my people who have the real God, 
the true and living God have changed their glory. They don't want to serve the real God, but these other nations are serving false gods. So God is asking a question, why are you doing this, my people? You are giving up your glory. Now, just real quick, what is that glory that they have changed? Give me 1 Samuel chapter 4, starting at verse 21, I believe it is. And give me Sirach 25 and verse 6, I think it is. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4, verse 21. Bring it out. And she named the child Ichabod. Right, so this is, this is during the time of uh, the priest Eli. He had two sons, Hophni and Phinehas. And this is one of their wives, right? Go ahead. Saying, the glory is departed from Israel. The glory is departed from Israel. Now remember the Lord already said, he said, has the nation changed their God, which are no gods, but my people have have given up their glory, have changed their glory. So here it is. The wife of, I think it is Phineas at this time, has this son called Ichabod, and she's ex she's examining our people, the Israelites, and says they have given up their glory. Go ahead. Because the ark of Yahweh was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. So the glory that was removed was the ark. Now, what was in that ark? Give me Deuteronomy 10 from the top. Sirach 25 and 6. The book of Sirach 25 and 6. God. Much experience is the crown of old men. Much experience is the crown of old men. Why? Because when you've lived a portion of life, you learn things, okay? Uh -huh. Throughout time, experience is natural to come. So God says, much experience is the crown of old men. Go ahead. And the fear of Yahweh is their glory. In the fear of God is their glory. Now, what is the fear of God? It tells us in Psalms 111 and verse 10, the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. A good understanding have all they that do his commandments. His praise endure forever. Amen. So this is the glory of any any of God's servants is the fear of God. Now, what was in that ark? Deuteronomy 10 from the top. This is the book of Deuteronomy chapter 10 from the top. Bring it out. At that time, the Lord said unto me, Hew thee two tables of stone. Two tables of stone, right? Like unto the first, and come up unto me into the mount, and make thee an ark of wood. Right? And I will write on the tables the words that were in the first tables which thou breakest. Now, what was written in the first tables that Moses broke when our people went out to play and did wickedness? Have a good one. Keep researching. Do a diligent search of your father's history, all right? And search out the scriptures. Line upon line, here a little, there a little, all right? All right. Have a good day. Um, read that last part again, King. Verse 2. And I will write on the tables... The words that were in the first tables, which thou breakest. Now, what was written on those tables, the first tables? The law, statutes, and commandments. God. That's what Moses received. Go ahead. And thou shalt put them in the ark. Right. Verse 3. And I made an ark of shittim wood and hewed two tables of stone uh -huh. like unto the first and went up into the mount having the two tables in my hand. Right. And he wrote on the tables according to the first writing. Right. The Ten Commandments. The what now? The, the Ten, Ten Commandments. The Commandments. This was what was in the ark. Go back to uh, 1 Samuel 4 and 21 again. 1 Samuel 4 verse 21 again. This is the book of 1 Samuel chapter 4 verse 21. And she named the child Ichabod, saying the glory is departed from Israel, right? Because the ark of Yahweh was taken, and because of her father-in-law and her husband. You see that? So this is when Israel was fighting against the Philistines, and the Philistines has removed the ark of the covenant. So when our glory was removed from us, it literally meant that the law, statutes, and commandments wasn't present with us. That is our glory, as Brother Israel was just, just brought out in uh, Sirach 25 and 6. That is the glory unto us is the fear of the Lord, keeping of his commandments. Now, going back to Easter again, remember, 
uh, uh, Jeremiah 2 and 11, the Lord says, has a nation changed their gods? How y'all doing today? Y'all got a couple of minutes for the word of God? Two minutes, two minutes y'all's time for the word of God? All right, all right. Well, know this, so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, we are God's chosen people. We must keep the commandments of God and the faith in Christ in these last days. Uh, this is the last days, and the Lord is going to return soon to redeem his people. That's right. All right, all right. All right, uh, let's, let's uh, read Jeremiah 2 and 11 one last time, then we'll get Judges, the second chapter. And then uh, give me uh, Deuteronomy, I think it's 32 and 24, I believe it is. Deuteronomy 32, 24. This is the book of Jeremiah, chapter 2, and verse 11. God. Hath a nation changed their gods, right. which are yet no gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which doeth not profit. Which doeth not profit. So they have changed the glory which doeth not profit, meaning they're not keeping the laws of God, which is no profit unto our people. No prophet. So they're following these pagan gods and worshiping these pagan holidays like Easter, which really goes back to Ashtaroth and Ishtar. These are the deities that the other nations were celebrating. Let's uh, let's go to Judges chapter 2 from the top. Give me 1 Kings chapter 11 from the top. Judges chapter 2 and verse 1. Con. And an angel of the Lord came up from Gilgal to Bashim. And said, I made you to go up out of Egypt right. and have brought you unto the land which I swear unto your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. Right. And ye shall make no league, no league with the inhabitants of the land. You see that? So the Lord, from the beginning, he says to separate from these other nations. He says, we are a holy people, a set apart people, to not try to come into covenant or a league with these other nations. Go ahead. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. You see that? So God commanded us to throw down their altars, meaning their place of worship. Remember, their gods are no gods. So God says we were supposed to destroy the altars of these other nations. How you doing, brother? Hey, how you, doing? you got a couple minutes of your time for the word of God, brother? Uh, I've actually taken off a few. Take a flyer, at least. And as you're walking away, then, brother, know this. The so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans were God's chosen people. We are the Israelites that the Bible speak of. We're not these bywords that the world has called us. We are the people of God. We must keep the commandments in these last days and the faith in Christ because our Redeemer the Messiah is returning soon to come get us, brother. All right? All right. Have a good one. All right. Keep reading, King. Judges chapter 2. And ye shall make no league. Wait, slide. Huh? Call the verse. Call the verse. Judges chapter 2 and verse 2. And ye shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. Ye shall throw down their altars, but ye have not obeyed my voice. Why have ye done this? Right, so the Lord said, why have ye done this? Why are you making a, a, a league or a covenant with these nations and you're not hearing my voice? I told you to destroy the altars of these other nations. Go ahead. Wherefore, I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, right? but they shall be as thorns in your side. So the Lord says, since we didn't want to listen to him and we wanted to intermingle with these other nations, he says, now they're going to be pricks in your eyes or thorns in your side. Go ahead. And their gods shall be a snare unto you. And there'd be a snare, meaning a trap unto us. How y'all doing today? Y'all got a couple of minutes for the word of God? Two minutes y'all's time for the word of God? Sure. All right. He says, sure. If you don't mind me asking, uh, what is your ethnicity on your father's side? You guys, the nationality on your father's side. Mohawk, Native American? Indigenous, okay, I like it, I like it. What about you, sister? Okay, Peruvian and Italian, so South American and Italian, okay. All right, so what we're out here to do is to wake up the lost sheep of the house of Israel, which are in fact you so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, which are God's chosen people. So in the Bible, you're not gonna see 
uh, Peruvian, you're not going to see Native American, African American, Indigenous, you're not going to see these. Sorry about that. Um, so in the Bible, you're not going to see these terms, but God has 18 nations of people that he created in the scriptures, and we all go back to somebody in the Bible. So what we're out here to do is to teach our people their heritage, their God-given nationality and heritage. So y'all may have not known this, but you guys go back to the chosen people of God. So watch this, Deuteronomy chapter 7, and verse 6. We were teaching on Easter, on the history and the custom Easter, on where it comes from, the origin, and if we're actually supposed to be celebrating it, if it's our history or not. But let's uh, show the brother and sister how God feels about his people. Deuteronomy 7 and 6, give me Jeremiah 17 and 4. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Uh -huh. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. God said his people, meaning the so-called black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, he says you are a holy people. The biblical definition of holy means to be set apart or separate. That's what that means. Go ahead. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee. Now what now? Hath chosen, chosen thee, thee right? to be a special people. Unto himself. Now, God says his people are a special people. This is why we can cook so good, why we look so good, right? Why we can jump and kick balls farther than any other nation, right? We're a, we're a special people, even though we've been subject to these other nations through captivity, oppression, uh, uh, you know, slavery, all these unfortunate uh, events that has happened and transpired throughout our history. But there's a reason for that. But even so, God says you are special unto him. Go ahead. The Lord thy God has chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, right? above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So now God says that we are above all people that are upon the face of the earth. So real quick, what's your guys' names? Mendez? I'm, I'm Brother Yuriel, by the way. So God says we're above all people, but when you look at our people, when I say our people, the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans, would you guys say that we're the top nation or we're at the bottom, meaning subject to the other nations. Who's ruling this earth? Is it us or the other nations? You in the military. You said, I don't have a word in that. I'm, I'm in the military. But, but you, you, you even saying that, I, I hear your thoughts, brother. Okay. Okay, so let's rewind. Let's rewind time 50 years ago. Different race would be on top, right? right? So, not that long ago, for sure, there was a different race ruling this earth, right? Are they still ruling this earth? In some, in some areas. Yeah. Not the whole earth? You don't think so? Give me an example. What place on earth do you think that certain race is not ruling? Mm -hmm. different Maybe China, right? Right. China is a communist country, right? But are they the top nation on this earth? No. No, they're not. So when I say ruling this earth, I don't mean like certain geographical locations. I mean like who is the ruler of this earth? Right, right. So let's 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 show the sister real quick. Let's get Job nine and twenty-four to illustrate what God says about that. And then give me before before we get Jeremiah seventeen four. Give me Genesis twenty-seven. It's the book of Job, chapter nine, and verse twenty-four. Uh -huh. The earth is given into the hand of the wicked. So God says that the earth is given into the hand of the wicked, right? He covereth the faces of the judges thereof. So God says these same people that would be ruling the earth would cover up the face of his people. Now, who is this man? Is it Jesus? The image that we know, right? Now, the Bible says that somebody would cover up his face. Now, that's what we've known. Like you said, this is the image that we have seen for centuries. Now, this isn't Christ. Now, you see how it says thief, liar, murderer. Now, to some people, that may seem disturbing. Christ wasn't a murderer. Christ wasn't a thief. Christ wasn't a liar. But this man was. This man was the name of a man by the name of Cesar Borgier, Pope Alexander VI's son. And the Pope of Rome, that was his son. True history. Let's show, let's show them real quick. Grab me that book uh, about the Borgier just really fast. It's a hard, hard cover book. It's like beige mostly. Yeah. So 
as I said, we studied history and archaeology and we coincided with the scriptures. So this is a book called The Borgiers by Marion Johnson. So this image, go to where the, I got the, go to back. this image right here was given to us in the 14th century. Uh, the Pope of Rome, Pope Alexander VI, also called Rod, Rodrigo Borgier. So read this part right here. And this this was painted by Leonardo da Vinci, and this is the history on it. Right. Portrait sketches of Cesar or Cesare Slacchia by Leonardo da Vinci after the fall of Milan right. and of his patron Luvicchio il Moro. Leonardo found employment with Cesare as his chief engineer. No, show them the pictures. So right here, this is the picture that they gave us of Christ. Now, are you guys familiar with the Last Supper and the Mona Lisa? The, the commonly plastered all over this world, right? And what do you see? You see, uh, you see an image of all these white men, right? And they're portraying that this man is Christ and the disciples. But that's not the true history. So when God says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked and he covered up the face of the judges thereof, God told us that this was going to happen. So Jesus Christ doesn't look nothing like this. Christ was a melanated person, a very dark melanated person. And the Bible records that. So the Bible says that the leading nation upon this earth that would be ruling is the wicked of the earth. Now, how did they come into rulership, though? This is very key. Give me Deuteronomy 28 from the top. Real quick. Give me Amos 3. We're going to come back. Amos 3. Back to Genesis. We have to show our people who we go back to in the scriptures and identify ourselves today. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 1. Wake up and it shall come to pass. Now when God says it's going to come to pass, it's going to happen. His word will not return to voice. So when the Lord has declared something to come to pass, it's going to happen. Go ahead. If thou shalt hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God. So God says if we hearken diligently, meaning listen carefully, because the root word of hearken is hear. So he says if we will hear his words carefully, go ahead. To observe and to do all his commandments. His what? All his commandments. So if we will observe and do, the Bible says faith without works is dead. So when God gave us law, statutes, and commandments, he says we got to hear and do them. Go ahead. Which I command thee this day, right? That all, that the Lord thy God will set thee on high above all nations of the earth. Now we just read that, right? In Deuteronomy seven and six, he says, "You are a special people, a holy people, above all nations that are upon the face of the earth." But God says in Deuteronomy twenty-eight, verse one, one on down, he says, "I will set you on high above all the nations of the earth." But that came with stipulations. Remember, he says, if you hear my word, my law, statutes, and commandments, and do them, this is the stipulation, you will be set on high. You will be the blessed people. But watch this, verse 15. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass. But, this is the contrary. He says, it shall come to pass, right? If thou wilt not hearken. Unto the voice of the Lord thy God. He says, but if you don't listen, my people, this is what's going to happen. Go ahead. To observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses, all these what? All, all these, these curses, curses, right? Shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, God gave us one of two things that would happen to us. He says, you listen, you follow me, you keep my commandments. I'm going to bless you. You're going to be set on high. No one's going to be able to touch you. Now, we could read the list of blessings, but I want to get, get to the point on why our people have been subject to these other nations for millenniums. Okay. Now, today in 2024, we have a false, uh, um, a false way of looking at our freedom. We think we're free, but the very fact that your name is Mendez, the very fact that you're speaking a language that you didn't originally speak 400 years ago proves that we are still in captivity to this day, brother. So watch this. What are the curses that would befall us? Start at verse 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. Now, God said that our people would be cursed in the city. Where's that? Uh, right here. Or down here. Flip that up, bro. 
So God said that wherever his people are, they would be the ones cursed in the city. Now remember, this is not, this is for breaking his commandments. The gangs, the drugs, pimping and prostitution, the, the, the constant murders, the police shootings. Who is this primarily happening to? Who's living in these types of fashions, primarily? Our people, right? The black, Hispanic, and Native American. I didn't want to say that. What'd you say? I didn't want to say black, that's wrong. Uh, who, who do you think? Oh, you guys. Well, now, when you say you guys, what do you mean? Black, Hispanic, and Native American. It's all right to say it. There's nothing wrong with saying it. I got told to say that. No, that's right, brother. That's right. So we're the ones that are primarily in these conditions, not only through violence and police shootings and uh, prostitution, but also poverty. Section 8 housing, food stamps. Uh, we're the last hired, the first fired, right? Unless we can sing, rap, dance, we don't get the opportunities or the promotions like these other nations do. Now, I'm not saying all of us. There's a few of us that make it to, to the higher stratosphere, but the majority of us is subject at the bottom. Would you guys agree with that? When you go to Mexico, South America, when you go to different parts of wherever we're at, we're living like this. Does everyone agree with that? Uh, That's the truth. Thank you. It's very hard to ignore. So we have to deal with the reality. Why is this happening though? God already told us that this is one of the things that would befall us as his people. We are his children. So he says, why are you suffering, my people? Because you're not keeping the law, statutes, and commandments. Keep reading. Uh, Curse shall, shall be thy basket and thy store. Back up, back up. It's like in Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse uh, 16. Curse shall thou be in the city, and curse shall thou be in the field. Now, this is another curse that God said would happen to us, that we would be the ones cursed in the field. Meaning what? The cotton fields. The tobacco fields the sugarcane fields, even today in 2024, who's in those fruits and vegetable fields today, picking all the agriculture? Primarily our Hispanic brothers and sisters, right? Being called illegal aliens, minorities, right? Really though, if you put us all together, we're the majority. That's right. But they want us to believe that we're the minority because minority would signify that they're better than us. The most that's exactly right. That's exactly right. But God is telling us why this is happening. So we have to go to the root of the problem before we can understand this, the solution to the problem. So the Lord said that we would be the ones cursed in the field. The vegetables and fruit fields today, our Hispanic brothers and sisters are being called illegal aliens in a land that belongs to them. Why isn't there a wall being built on the Canadian and American border? But there's one on the... <laughs> There's on the south border of America. So the people that belong here, they're saying, you don't belong here no more. But the people who truly are the real aliens to this country, come as you will. You see, there's a real problem with that. Y'all understand that, right? So God said that this is a curse on us. Give me verse 32. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Shall be what? Shall, shall be, be given, given unto, unto another, another people. people. Are you guys familiar with the conquistadors? The history of the conquistadors? Yep, they came from Spain, right? Portugal, Spain, right? They came down there and from different parts of Europe, right? And they came down and conquered. That's the word conquistador goes to the, to the word conquer, right? And they enslaved uh, the Incas, the Aztecans, and the Mayans, right? and removed our children from us, but not just the Hispanics, but the Native Americans and the so-called black men and women as well, right? Because we're really brothers and sisters. We look a little different, but we go back to the same forefather in the Bible, okay? So God says that they would remove our children from us through captivity. Well, who has the history of being slaves? Our people throughout the ages. This is a curse on us. Even today, sister, when you look at the CPS system, we, as a people, are having our children removed at a much higher rate from uh, and taken into foster care than these other nations. This is a curse on us. Like when you go down to the the border, whose children were in the cages? It was our children, right? Our people. It's 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 hard to hear, and maybe people don't want to talk about it, but we got to talk about it so we can get to the solution and ultimately to the kingdom of heaven. So God says we have to go through these things to understand who we are 
and identify ourselves in the last day because God is coming back for his people. Uh, keep reading on. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. We would look for our family, but when they took our family, there was nothing we could do about it. When Master Gonzalez or Master Smith came and took our children from us, that was it. They were gone. Go ahead. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Because our people don't have no military might, even though you're in the military. It's not your military. Right? Well, but, but still, where does the word Mexico come from? Who's running, who's running Mexico? Who are they subject to? Give me, give me, do, uh, give me Genesis 49. Let's show them. It's in the Bible. Okay. The history on, on how we've been subject to their politics, to their laws, to their unrighteous decrees, right? Okay. So let me show you, because the Bible says that this would happen to the Mexicans. Watch. So-called Mexicans. Genesis 49, 14, before we go back to the curse. Go ahead, King. This is the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 14. Issachar. Who? Issachar. Issachar, like this brother, like this brother, like this brother, and I'm assuming you too with that last name. Issachar, one of God's chosen people. You are a royal people. You are special to the Lord. Tell them about Issachar. Issachar is a strong ass. Is a what? Strong oh, ass. Yeah. Now, what is the national symbol for Mexico? What animal? Bird? Are you sure? The donkey. The donkey. The donkey, right? America's national animal is a bird, the eagle, and that's actually recorded in the scriptures too. But the donkey. Now, who is the hardest working people on this earth? Known for being the hardest working people. Without a doubt. Yeah. Without a doubt. So God says this is one of the attributes that Issachar would possess is that they would be a very strong working people. Yeah, 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 no doubt. Yeah. Everyone in every nation, there, there's a degree of, you know, certain characteristics, you know, hardworking. But when you look at the Hispanics, bar none, they'll, they'll work sun up to sun down for just to give a sandwich to their family. And that's not that's not to take a stab at our people. That's just that's to give credit to our people, how, how blessed they are. So God said that this is one of the attributes of the so-called Mexicans. Go ahead. Couching down between two burdens. So he says Issachar would be couching down between two burdens, meaning what? Between South America and North America. It's also called today Central America. This is where Issachar is seated. Go ahead. Go ahead. Verse 15, and he saw the rest was good. He saw that rest was good. In Mexico, they got what is called an hour of siesta, an hour of rest, because they are a hard working people. Go ahead. And the land that it was pleasant. So wherever Issachar would be, the land would be pleasant. Now, the people would be under curses, though because of disobedience to God. But the land where Issachar would be, the Mexicans would be, the land would be pleasant. Mexico is a very renowned place for vacations. All over this world, people want to go to Mexico for vacation. Cancun, Puerto Vallarta, so on and so forth. The Lord said that the land would be pleasant. Go ahead. And bowed his shoulder to bear. They're, they pay tribute to the other nations though, liquidated for their resources, right? and became a servant unto tribute just like i just said they're, they're they're being liquidated for all their resources right dan shall so now it's going into dan so god told us that the mexicans he doesn't say the word mexican but he says issachar this is one clue on how we can identify who they are today now go back to the curses deuteronomy 28 where you left off at all right all good, brother and sister. Hey, well, you guys are Israelites, brother and sister. You guys are God's chosen people. Learn and keep the commandments of God and keep the faith in Christ in these last days because Christ is returning soon and we have to be ready. This is the last days. Check out our YouTube page. It's on the, uh, yeah, so definitely give us comments, ask any questions. We'd be happy to communicate with you guys. Peace and blessings, brother. Stay safe, man. Peace and blessings, family. All praises to the Most High. Go ahead. What do you guys do? April 8th eclipse. I, I haven't seen anything about it. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't seen nothing about it.
Are you all familiar with what he's talking about? Basically, they're saying that it's going to be dark for three days. And, 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 uh, I haven't I, myself gonna, either, but if you want to explain yeah. it, I, you probably could do it better. So, I've been so busy lately, man, with, with work and the ministry. I, I honestly haven't seen uh, no updates on, on uh, no eclipse. Um, but, um, April 8th, there's going to be an eclipse that goes over some cities in Nineveh. And in 2017, there was a Saint Thursday eclipse that was that went over some cities in Salem. And so, and, but also the, this one, the next, the, the April 8th one's going to go over some cities in um, Jonah too. And so, if you were talking about the book of Jonah, uh, no, they're referencing this verse that uh, Jesus says, where he says, "Just um, uh, such an adulterous generation would ask for a miraculous sign, but they oh, yeah, wouldn't yeah, give yeah, a sign yeah. other than the, the sign, sign of, of Jonah. Jonah." Yeah, yeah. And so, seven cities named, you know, Salem, seven cities named uh, Nineveh. And where, where the two um, eclipses of um, half meet, that city, Indiana, Rapture. We read the book of Acts chapter 2, um, starting at verse 17, I believe. So, Acts 2 and 17. No, no, but just like this big thing, like, what do we, like, what do we, the Lord, you know, he, he's the one who created the moon and the sun and the, the stars. So everything has a purpose and signs of the times. You know, we, we are in the end days and there's there are signs of the times, the blood moons. Uh, the wars, the rumors of wars, the earthquakes, the pestilences, all these things are a direct sign that God is sending his son soon to, to wreak havoc upon this earth for all the evil that is upon the face of the earth. Give me Isaiah 60 from the top. Isaiah 60 from the top. Go ahead, King. Acts 2 and 17, I think it is. Let me see. Yeah. This is the book of Acts, chapter 2 and verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And that's what's happening. The Lord is pouring out his people upon it, uh, his spirit upon his people. Go ahead. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions. So see what? Visions. See visions. Right. And your old men shall dream dreams. Right. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Right. And I will show wonders in heaven above. In what? In heaven above. So the Lord said he's going to do this. He's going to show wonders in the heavens. We're going to see things that clearly man has no control over, that it has to be God the Father. Go ahead. And signs in the earth beneath. Right. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Uh-huh. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Right. And the moon into blood. Right. Before that great and notable day. Before that great and notable day. So we're going to see these things transpire in the last days. So these eclipses, the blood moons, God already foretold us that this is going to happen. Go ahead. In that notable day of the Lord come. What notable day? Malachi 4 and verse 1. Isaiah 60 from the top. This is the book of Isaiah chapter 60 from the top. God. Arise, shine, for thy light is come. Right. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Right. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. The darkness shall cover the earth. Now, this is a spiritual connotation on what he's referencing here. Go ahead. And gross darkness, the people. Now, what is that talking about? Sirach 11 and 16. Go ahead, King. Malachi 4 and 1. What day before that great and terrible day? Go ahead. Malachi chapter 4 and verse 1. Uh -huh. For behold, the day cometh. That shall burn as an oven. This is that day that he's talking about. The day of judgment. The day of reckoning. Go ahead. And all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble. Shall be what? Shall, shall be, be stubble. stubble. Uh -huh. And the day that cometh shall burn them up. Right. Saith the Lord of hosts. Saith who? Saith Sayeth the Lord, Lord of hosts. Host. Right. That it shall leave them neither root nor branch. Meaning no family members, right? But unto you that fear my name. But unto them that fear his name, meaning keep his commandments. Go ahead. Shall the son of righteousness arise with healing in his wings. Right. And ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall. And this is what's coming for the righteous. The Lord is going to bring his people to a land flowing with milk and honey. But for those that want to do evil, that day of judgment is coming. So, yeah, we're going to see signs in the heavens. We're going to see the moon grow dark or the sun grow dark and the moon be like a blood moon. And we've been seeing these things. OK, this is the last days and it's, it's gross darkness upon the earth. And God already forewarned us that when we see these things, the earthquakes and the blood moon and the, the eclipses and 
uh, uh, the pestilences and the tornadoes and hurricanes and men being lovers of themselves and of pleasure and of money, children disobeying their parents. When we see these things abounding in the earth, he says, understand, I'm at the door. I'm coming soon. That's why he said he's going to come like a thief in the night. He's going to, he says, when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction. So what is that darkness, that gross darkness that is upon the face of the earth? Sirach 11 and 16. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, chapter 11, verse 16. God. Error and darkness. Error and darkness. Had their beginning together with sinners. With what? With, with sinners. sinners. Uh -huh. And evil shall wax old with them that glory therein. There is no prosperity to the wicked. The Bible says, any man who wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. So that's the gross darkness that's upon the face of the earth is sin, wickedness, evil is abounding. But God's people are coming out in these last days to these street corners and rebuking the evil of the day God. because the Messiah is returning soon. Now, uh, good morning. It's fine. Uh, I didn't even ask him, but yes, yeah, fine. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um. So our mission is to wake up the so-called Black, Hispanic, and Native Americans. So if that relates to your father's lineage, do some research and uh, keep the commandments and the faith in Christ in these last days. We're not supposed to judge off the appearance, but we do have to judge righteous judgment, as the Lord have said. Um. Do you have a Bible? Oh uh, yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Definitely read it, man. And if your spirit bears witness. Um, you know, that, that would be the best determination of if you are uh, a child of God. So, I have a good one, man. Um, and Israel has to get better at making sure that we're, we're have to be fishers of men. He didn't say be fishers of whoever you want to be. He said be a fishers of his people, meaning cast the bait and let the Lord draw his people in. So, I mean, we do have to have discernment. And we have to go through the, uh, the, the the righteous protocol, meaning judge out the father's lineage, know them by their fruits, the curses of Deuteronomy 28. And yes, the spirit will bear witness, meaning the spirit has to agree with the word of God. That's what that's saying. So all these things have to be factored in to prove who one is, if they're in fact an Israelite or not. But there's going to be a lot of people on that day. They're not going to know. How you doing today? You got a couple of minutes of your time for the word of God? Got a couple minutes of your time for the word of God? Two minutes of your time for the word of God, brother. All right. What what does it mean to believe in the Lord, brother? Well, let, let's talk about it. You don't you don't know what we believe yet, brother? Well, let's let's show he said he believes in God. Let's show the brother what he believe uh, what what believing God means. Let's get to Rock 32 and 24. I'm gonna get back to Easter stuff. And I'm gonna pass it like five. Rock 32 and 24. He said, he said he believes in God, but we believe different stuff. I never met that man. Uh, this is the book of Sirach, chapter 32 and verse 24. Bring it out. He that believeth in the Lord taketh heed to the commandment. God. That's what believing in the Lord means. So anyone who says they believe in God, not keeping the commandments, they truly don't believe in God. Now you're going to believe in something that you don't listen to. Ah, bring it out. God says, if you believe in him, you are going to take heed to the commandments. Go ahead. And he that trusteth in him shall fare never the worst. There ain't no going wrong with trusting in the Lord. It's a win-win. Okay? When you don't trust God, it's a lose-lose. Not, right. not only are you going to lose in this life, but you're going to lose in a second. That's right. Where you're going to be raised to condemnation, like the Bible says. So it's a win-win to fear and trust the Lord, keep his commandments. Now, going back to the topic on Easter, um, I know we kind of got sidetracked with some questions, but that's why we're out here, through the Spirit. That's why we come out here is to edify and admonish people and rebuke as necessary. So let's go back to Judges 2 and let's jump down to 10. Plant seeds, King. Get a couple more on that. So Easter goes back to Ishtar or Ashtaroth, okay? Or, or even the name Astarte. That's another name, too, that uh, uh, that the nations uh, associated with. Even even with uh, Greece, with Aphrodite. All these are the same people, but different names being used through different uh, nations. Judges 2 and 10. Give me Habakkuk 2 and 18. It's the book of Judges, chapter 2 and verse 10. Give me wisdom of Solomon. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers. 
and there arose another generation after them, right? Which knew not the Lord. Which knew not the Lord. Watch this. Go ahead. Nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baalim. You see that? So here it is. Our people started to worship idols. They started to worship Baalim. Okay. And what else did our people start to worship? And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed other gods. Did what now? Followed oh, other God, gods. Right? Of the gods of the people that were round about them. And that's what our people have always done, even to this very day. They're following the gods of these other nations, serving and worshiping pagan deities that have nothing to do with our heritage or our history. Uh -huh. When God says we got to serve him and him only. Joel, give me Exodus 20 from the top. King, go ahead. And bowed themselves unto them, right? And provoked the Lord to anger. And we provoked the Lord to anger, right? And they forsook the Lord and served Baal and Ashtaroth. And what now? And Ashtaroth. And Ashtaroth, meaning this is where Easter goes back to, is pagan worship. Bring it out. Ishtar, Ashtaroth, Astarte, has nothing to do with the resurrection of Christ. It has everything to do with the fer fertility goddess, Easter eggs and bunny. This is where all this stuff comes from. It has paganism. nothing to do with, exactly, paganism, Deep. pagan worship. Uh, bring out what you got first, King. This is the book of Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 18. Huh. What profiteth the graven image that the maker thereof hath graven it? Because Christianity is full of graven images. Huh. Easter is associated from Catholicism and Christianity, but going all the way back to uh, uh, ancient worship. With the ancient Hamites, once again, with Asherah, Astarte, Ishtar, Aphrodite, all these are associated. Go ahead. The molten image and a teacher of lies. A teacher of lies. Bring what, it out. what in the heck does an Easter bunny and eggs and jelly beans have to do with the resurrection of Christ? Nothing. Bring it out. Okay. Lies and deception, a teacher of lies. Go ahead. That the maker of his work trusteth therein. Right. To make dumb idols? To make dumb idols. That's all they are. All these pagan holidays that our people are worshiping is I, I, idolatry. That's all it is. Go ahead. Verse 19. Woe unto him that said to the wood, awake. Right. To the dumb stone, arise. And that goes to all these religions. They want to worship the creation and not the creator. The Lord says, woe meaning destruction unto them. Go ahead. Behold, it is laid over with gold and silver, uh -huh. and there is no breath at all in the midst of it. You see that? So it's just idolatry. And the Lord says, anyone who's worshiping these days, woe unto them. Give me uh -huh. wisdom of Solomon 14, 8 through 12, and then we'll get Exodus 20 from the top. God. And I'll leave it with that. Wake him up. Through the Spirit. This is the book of the wisdom of Solomon 14 and verse 8. Bring it out. But that which is made with hands is cursed. Is what? Is, is cursed. cursed. See that? We don't want to serve the creation. We got to serve the living God. That's right. Not what man has created. Go ahead. As well it as he that had made it. He because he made it and it because being corruptible it was called God. You see that? So that's what our people do. They... They like to follow the examples of these other nations. Remember, the Bible says in Psalms 106, 34 on down, he says, we mingled with the heathen and learned their works, and it became a snare unto us. Go ahead, King. For the ungodly and his ungodliness are both alike hateful unto God. Right, hateful unto God. So when our people are going to these churches and celebrating Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Fourth of July, Valentine's Day, they are hateful unto God. God hates that stuff. Go ahead. For that which is made shall be punished together with him that made it. Meaning those that want to serve the idols, God is going to not only destroy the idols, but he's going to destroy those who celebrate and worship the idols. Uh, Go ahead. Therefore, even upon the idols of the Gentiles shall there be a visitation, because in the creature of God... They are become an abomination, 
and stumbling blocks to the souls of men. You see that? Stumbling blocks. Remember, the Lord says they're a trap. When our people want to serve and worship this madness, this folly, it is a trap to our people. Go ahead. Speaking of wood idols. Yep, wood idols. Yep. That's and in the a spirit. snare to the feet of the unwise. And a snare to the feet of the unwise. A, a snare to the feet of the unwise. Now, the Lord, he tells us to keep our feet stable. We don't want to walk on the smooth stones. We want to go through the straight and narrow, not waver. But the unwise feet are unstable. Remember, the feet the feet of the, the wicked are always hurrying to do evil. And the Lord hates that. Six things does the Lord hate. Feet that run off to do evil is one of them. Go ahead. The wicked flee when no man pursue it. I mean, that's just what it is. They run to do evil right now with that imagery of a false god. Right there. Go ahead, King. Verse 12, for the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. The get that, King, real quick. The devising of what? For the devising of idols was the beginning of spiritual fornication. You see that? The devising, the plotting and scheming of creating idols That's right. was the beginning of spiritual fornication. In other words, it was the beginning of our separation with God. That's right. Cheating on the Father. Go ahead. And the invention of them. And the what? The invention of them. Uh -huh. The corruption of life. And that's why our people are corrupted. That's why our people are in dismay. Why we're in the conditions uh, that we're in is because we are following the ways of evil. We're following the ways of these nations. And that's what's causing us to be destroyed. So we have to wake up in these last days and return unto the, to the true and living God. And that is where we're going to be healed. Let's get Exodus 20 from the top. This is the book of Exodus chapter 20 and verse 1. Uh, Revelation 20 through 14. I'm going to close with that. And Yahweh spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God. What did the Lord say? I, I am, am the Lord, Lord thy God. God. Right? Which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Right? Thou shalt have no other gods before me. No what? No, no other gods before me. Right? Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image. Uh-huh. Or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above. Right? Or that is in the earth beneath. Right? Or that is in the water under the earth. Uh-huh. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them. Thou shalt not what? Thou, Thou shalt, shalt not bow, bow down, down thyself to them. To them. Right? Nor serve them. Nor what? Nor, nor serve, serve them. them. Right? For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. You see that? The Lord is a jealous God. Ah, He's not right. playing. If, we, if our people want to cheat on him, destruction is coming. No one, no one likes a divorce. No one wants... Everyone that I've ever met in my life who had someone cheat on them, they're not, they're not spoken kindly of, okay? Ah. And the Lord said, you want to cheat on him? That's why we're being destroyed. We have to return unto the living God and be faithful unto him. That is why Christ is called the groom and we are the bride. We have to honor that marriage. The Most High God said, I am the Lord, your God, and none else. God. He's faithful to us and we have to be faithful unto him. That's right. Let's close with Revelation 22, 14 on down. You said 22? Revelation 22, 14 and 15. Come on. This is the book of Revelation 22 and 14. Chapter 22 and verse 14. Right. Blessed are they that do his commandments. Blessed are they. You are blessed if you do. Not just hear, but do. Ah. Okay, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But you have to practice out what you hear. Once you hear the word of God, you got to live out the word of God. Do the word of God. Go ahead. That they may have right to the tree of life. Those that keep the commands, commandments of God will have right to the tree of life. You may have right to the tree of life if you do the commandments. Go ahead. And may enter in through the gates into the city. Through the gates. One of those 12 gates written with the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. Those that keep the commandments of God may enter in through the gates of the city. Go ahead. For without our dogs. Our what? Our, our dogs. dogs. Are the other nations, right? And sorcerers. And sorcerers. And whoremongers. And anyone who wants to practice uh, uh, fornication, adultery, uh, idolatry, any of that, things of that nature. Go ahead. And murderers. And murderers. And idolaters. And what? And, and idolaters. 
and idolaters. Anyone who wants to practice out and worship Easter, Christmas, Thanksgiving, okay, Valentine's Day, Fourth of July, that's all idolatry. Bring it out. It's all wickedness. God gave us high holy days to celebrate. That's Passover, right. Purim, that's right. Feast of Tabernacles, Day of Atonement, God. the Sabbath day. These are things that we're supposed to observe and do. Wake God up. says those that are practicing idolatry will not get into the kingdom of heaven. That's right. Go ahead. And whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. And all you people that want to love Easter, want to love false religions and live it out, the Lord says you ain't getting into the kingdom, period. Ah. He said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. So how do we become liberated? Through the law, statutes, and commandments in the faith in his only begotten son. God. And with God. that, I'm going to say, Kwam Yasharala! Kwam Yasharala! Kwam Yasharala! Kwam Yasharala! Kwam Yasharala! Kwam Yasharala! And with that, I yield my time. God! How do work here? I don't know how you ain't cold. <laughs> Spirit was warming you up, baby! Jeremiah 5.14, he said, he said, he said,